Thursday night football is right around the corner as the New York Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles battle it out in this NFC East showdown in Lincoln Financial Field with a capacity crowd of zero. Tua Tagovailoa is officially named the starter in Miami. It's Tua time. We're going to be unpacking that and what that means for the Miami Dolphins moving forward. Also, the decision to bench Ryan Fitzpatrick in the process. Antonio Brown's suspension is coming to an end in Week 8, meaning that the Seattle Seahawks and many more teams are in pursuit of the wide receiver. Speaking of Week 8, the trade deadline for the NFL is coming up. We're going to be talking about which players that every single team, all 32 teams, should target prior to the trade deadline. All of that and much more on a brand new episode of Time to Football. Glad that you guys are joining us on this Thursday. My name is Hassan Khan, the host of this show. So we're doing this show from now on, on Thursdays, 7 p.m. every single week. We used to do this on Wednesdays, but last week we did this on Thursday. We had a great turnout. It seemed like everyone was able to chat with us and watch this as it premiered live on YouTube. And we're going to continue to do this as a pregame show prior to the Thursday night football game. So instead of watching Colleen Wolf or Joe Thomas or Steve Smith or Michael Irvin on this awkward tape delay on an NFL network, you get to chat with us. You get to interact with us. And this is going to be a fun podcast that you can interact with me while I'm in the chat. If you guys are watching this on the computer, what's up? I'm, I'm waving you guys on the chat on the side. But if you guys are watching this on mobile down below, chat with us, interact with us. I'm probably typing something right now. I don't know what I'm going to type, but I'm probably typing something right now that's going to be pretty awesome. So interact with us and uh, chat with us, ask your questions. I'll be in the process of, of chatting with you guys and interact with you guys as we watch this show. Like we mentioned, a lot to talk about on this show, and it's going to be very, very fun with that trade deadline. Uh, we're going to play a little bit of game I'll explain later on. First, we want to thank Feedspot.com for this uh, continuous support by naming us as one of the top 100 NFL podcasts in the world. So Feedspot.com, thank you so much for that honor and the uh, and the rankings of NFL Live and um, around the the NFL, the NFL's official podcast and ESPN's official podcast. Uh, to be in that company means a lot. So thank you so much to Feedspot.com. We're going to start with the topics that we have for the show, like I mentioned prior in the beginning. But first, we have to give the most prestigious award on the show, not the Checkdowns Award, not the NFL. They stole that from me, but my own personal award, the Hungriest Player of the Week. Hungriest Player of the Week, the one that wanted it the most. The one that played hungriest may be given to someone like Derrick Henry with that amazing overtime game that he had against the Houston Texans. Maybe to someone like Kenyon Drake, who was in danger of losing his starting job, but then he just showed out against the Dallas Cowboys, solidified it, dagger with that long touchdown run. But we're not going to give it to those guys. We're going to give it to someone that is underrated because that's what the hungriest player of the week is about. Naming those players that don't get that much attention but played like they were hungry. That's right. We're going to give this award this week to a kicker, our second kicker this season. Brandon McManus of the Denver Broncos showed up and showed out against the New England Patriots. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not seven, not eight, not nine. Six field goals for Brandon McManus. 18 points responsible for the Denver Broncos putting up 18 points in that game and winning 18-12 to against the New England Patriots. Kicked a uh, 54-yarder, I believe it was. Kicked a 52-yarder and many more field goals on top of that. Brandon McMahon has proved that he's capable of playing in the NFL. So take that, all the kids growing up making fun of him for having the name Anus in his last name. Because Brandon McMahon has proved you wrong and proved why he is deserving of the hungriest player of the week. Only the second kicker this season to be named the Hungriest Player of the Week. We named it to Harrison Butker back in Week 2. But your Week 6 Hungriest Player of the Week is Brandon McManus. Now to get into the topics for the show. A lot to talk about with Tua Tugavailoa. A surprise decision by head coach Brian Flores to name Tua the starting quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. 
It's a surprise because Ryan Fitzpatrick has been playing lights out. If you want to talk about fantasy football perspective, I believe it was four or five straight games where he's had over 20 fantasy points in those games. 10 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, which is kind of, you know, that's turnovers need to be worked on. But that didn't even matter because he's been playing lights out as far as the passing game goes and the running game, having two rushing touchdowns on the ground as well. He's been playing as if his career didn't matter at that point. He has nothing left to lose. He's at the tail end of his career. This may be his last season in the NFL. So he just decided to all of a sudden bomb the ball down the field and just show up and show out. So Ryan Fitzpatrick is benched in the process, and that was a surprise. We're going to unpack the, the the quotes and what head coach Brian Flores said uh, with the decision of benching Fitzpatrick for Tugavailoa. And this is what he said. We feel like that this is the best team or best thing for the team. We feel like through practice and meetings and walkthroughs that he's ready. And that's how we're going to move forward. And then he was asked about Fitzpatrick. Fitz has done a great job. He's been productive. His leadership's been great. It's not an easy decision for me or us as an organization. But we felt like for the team now in moving forward, this is the move we need to make. And I don't know if you saw the reaction by Ryan Fitzpatrick and the comments that he made, but it kind of <laughs> it pulled the heartstrings for a lot of NFL fans because Fitzpatrick is a guy that you want to root for. And it, it, it was kind of sad because what he said is it, it broke his heart and it, he was hurt the whole day by being benched. And... He felt like that this was his team and it caught him off guard and it was a surprise. It was a shocker. So in that sentiment, we feel for Fitzpatrick. This sucks and gosh, I, I can't. It's sad. It really is sad because I, I I was rooting for the guy. He looked amazing. But nonetheless, the, the business decision is to move on with Tua as a starting quarterback. So what does this mean for the Dolphins? Are they going to be as good with Fitzpatrick out of there and two are replacing him that they were with Fitzpatrick as a starting quarterback. I don't know personally, and we haven't seen enough of Tua, especially with the lack of preseason. So we don't know just yet. We just saw that one drive that he came in and threw a couple of passes. But if I had to make an educated guess on this, I think that the Dolphins will be fine with Tua moving forward. You think about it, with Flores making this decision with the way that Fitzpatrick has been playing the level that he's been playing at the decision to take him out and put in Tua saying that he's ready moving forward you've got to have a lot of balls and a lot of faith in Tua to to make a decision like that you must really believe that he's ready to make a significant impact in the NFL if you're ready to get rid of one of the dare I even say as as far as QBR goes by ESPN a top 10 quarterback this season and Ryan Fitzpatrick to take him out as far as quarterback rating goes and put in Tua Tugavailoa. You must have a lot of confidence in him. So with all that said, Tua in that instance could be the next Lamar Jackson, could be the next Kyler Murray, could be the next Patrick Mahomes. I don't know. It might happen. But I think that Flores is on that track and on that road and believes that that could happen for the Dolphins. Because listen, this decision probably would have made a lot more sense if the Dolphins were 1-5 and five or 0-6. Oh You've got nothing to lose. Why not just put in Tua? Give him some experience so that by year two, he could just take off. But the fact that you're 3-3, three and three, and I believe a half game behind in the AFC East for the lead behind the Buffalo Bills... You're in the thick of the the playoff race and you make that decision to change your starting quarterback who wasn't that bad at all. You must really have a lot of faith in Tua Tugavailoa. So guys, comment down below. Like, Do you believe that Tua is going to be this this amazing next big thing in the NFL at quarterback? Or is he just going to falter out and this decision was made by Brian Flores just to give him some, some playing time? Because... Three and three, I believe that the Miami Dolphins organization and this team can make the NFL playoffs. They're in contention to make that seventh, that new, brand new seventh wild card seed that was introduced this season in 2020. So 
Tua, we're going to have to see. Very talented quarterback. Heart hurts for, for Fitzpatrick, but Flores loves the decision and has a lot of faith in Tua. Next topic, Antonio Brown. Oof. Man, flashbacks to 2018, 2019, when this guy was in the news for his character issues and uh, just jumped around from team to team, eventually got traded to, to the Raiders and then called Mike Mayock a cracker and eventually got traded to the Patriots and released by the Patriots. No one wanted him. So suspended by the NFL by Roger Goodell, is gonna that suspension is going to end in week eight. It's week seven right now. It's going to end in week eight. He is eligible to sign with any NFL team. And at this point right now, the Seattle Seahawks are contenders for Antonio Brown. Why, you ask? They brought him in for some workouts here and there in the past. Also, Russell Wilson has been training with Antonio Brown in summer workouts. So Brown, who looks like he's in shape from those summer workouts, still wearing his Raiders helmet. He looks like he's good to go and is going to be the next Seattle Seahawk at this point. Adam Schefter of ESPN stated that there are many more teams in the process of signing Antonio Brown. We don't know which teams those are. The only teams that we know for sure are the Seattle Seahawks. Some other teams that we would want to talk about, we're going to get to those. We have three specific teams besides the Seattle Seahawks we're going to mention. But kind of leaning towards the Seahawks, if Brown were to sign with the Seattle Seahawks, I'm sorry, man. I, I think the Seahawks team is Super Bowl bound. Right now, they're looking amazing, better than ever. DK Metcalf is the next big thing at the wide receiver position. And you add an Antonio Brown. I don't think Antonio Brown is going to get uh, um, tons of yards and receptions or, or anything, but he's going to be a good decoy for people like DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. So even if Antonio Brown has lost a step, he's going to do wonders for the Seattle Seahawks in that process. Top three, think about that. Top three receivers. For the Seattle Seahawks, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Antonio Brown, whichever order you want to put them in, this Seahawks team will be amazing if they sign Antonio Brown. Defense needs a lot of help, but it doesn't really matter if you sign Brown and your offense can score touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. So the Seahawks would be incredible for Antonio Brown. Other teams that we want to talk about, I don't know. Antonio Brown's interest with many of these teams because you may want to sign with someone with the best chance of making the Super Bowl, like the Seattle Seahawks. But three teams we really not we really needed to focus on that need that wide receiver help. Let's start off with the Green Bay Packers. In the thick of things, could make the Super Bowl. They have a great team. Had that one game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers where they did not look that good, but they're able to rebound and they're still in contention of making the Super Bowl. This team desperately needs wide receiver help. They wasted that first... I don't want to say wasted because I don't know how it's going to turn out. But that first round pick on Jordan Love is not working out for them right now in the moment, in the current, in 2020. So they need that wide receiver after Devin Funchess opted out of COVID-19 speculation. He opted out of the 2019 season or the 2020 season. And Devontae Adams is basically the only good wide receiver that they have. Alan, Alan Lazard is currently injured. And Marquez Valdez-Scantling has been a kind of a disappointment at this point. So adding that number two wide receiver in Antonio Brown will do amazing things for Aaron Rodgers in that passing game. They already have a run game. They already have a good passing game and what they can work with because you have Aaron Rodgers, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Adding an Antonio Brown with Devontae Adams side by side or in opposite sides, that's a dream come true. That's something so that's like something that you would see in Madden. So Antonio Brown signing with the Green Bay Packers would be pretty awesome to see. Another team that we want to talk about that could be in conversations with Antonio Brown was in conversations uh, of trade talks prior in 2019 during the 2019 offseason with the Pittsburgh Steelers, the San Francisco 49ers. Why not? They always seem to need offensive weapons or get some offensive weapons. You could make the argument that they're fine. This is not their biggest priority. I understand. It's not. Okay. They need some help with the injuries that they have on defense. They could use some defensive help. You have Debo Samuel coming back from an injury. Brandon Ayuk looks like he's going to be a good player in the NFL. You're fine. But if you add in Antonio Brown, is that really going to hurt? If he gets over the character issues Think of the things that Antonio Brown could do with this offense with Kyle Shanahan and his creativity. Okay, we saw it with uh, Debo Samuel, how he came up to 
uh, being one of the better wide receivers in the NFL with his breakout season last season was because of the creativity that Kyle Shanahan created and the opportunities that he created for Debo Samuel in that 49ers offense. Did the same thing with Brandon Ayuk. Used him in the run game. Used him in the pass game. He's been used in special teams a couple times as well. So Kyle Shanahan just has a knack for this. He's able to just just look at people's strengths, look at his players and his strengths, and really expound on their strengths. And Antonio Brown could be a good wide receiver that he could use in the passing game, dare I even say, in the running game as well, if we were to see that with the way that he's been using Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk. So Brown to the 49ers, do you guys believe that it's a possibility? Interact with us, chat with us, comment down below. Let us know, is that a possibility, a new target for Jimmy Garoppolo? The last team that might be contenders to sign Antonio Brown, I think this is a no-brainer. I don't think this is a surprise, but the Philadelphia Eagles should be in pursuit of getting Antonio Brown. Reason being is because of the, the injuries that they had on that Eagles offense. Okay, I don't care what you say, what anybody says. If you don't agree with this, you may not watch a lot of football, but Carson Wentz is still a capable starting above average quarterback in the NFL. He's not the problem in Philadelphia. And if you disagree, listen, I don't know what else to tell you. Just wait until he gets gets his receivers back. Just wait until he gets his offensive line back. All the injuries, he needs a lot of help on that team. That's all I'll say. And Antonio Brown would be a great help for that Eagles team. Alshon Jeffrey continues to be inactive week after week after week. When you think he's so close to playing, He's inactive. Tonight against the New York Giants, he's going to be inactive. Deshaun Jackson will finally be playing after suffering an injury, and he'll be back into the starting lineup. Jalen Rager, they're waiting for him to come back. It's going to be another couple weeks before he's back. Zach Ertz just got hurt. Out four to six weeks is on IR. He could also potentially be traded, but we'll be talking about that later on once we get to the trade deadline portion of this show. Dallas Goddard, currently, right now, he is injured. Could be using another couple weeks to get back up to speed before he is back into that Eagles lineup. So this team could use a lot of help currently, right now. So if they want to make a move to sign Antonio Brown, I would say nothing more than vet minimum to sign Antonio Brown, which at that point, I don't know if he's going to agree to that. But if they were to sign him veteran minimum, that would be amazing for the Philadelphia Eagles because, like I mentioned, the injuries and then Marquise Goodwin, a guy that they traded for, is out because of COVID-19. So, Antonio Brown to the Eagles. Is that a possibility? Comment down below. And out of all these teams, which one do you believe he has the best chance of signing with? Me, personally, I believe it's the Seattle Seahawks. But interact with us. Let us know. What's your opinion? All right. Time for the fun part of this show. Trade candidates for 2020 prior to the trade deadline next week. So we wanted to split this up, AFC and NFC. We're going to start with AFC first. We're going to make a little game out of this. Okay, let's say that in the NFL, prior to the trade deadline, let's just use your imagination, use your mind. Let's say that every team has to make at least one trade prior to the trade deadline. It's a rule. And once a team makes a trade, that player is is out of co- the conversation, is no longer could be mentioned twice when we talk about these teams. So you're going to catch on little by little as we go on, but we want to start off first with the AFC. Let's say that every team has to make a trade. The Patriots, who are their number one trade target or the trade candidates in 2020? A lot to talk about. There's John Ross, there's AJ Green. They need some receiver help. But let's talk about a guy that we just talked about, tight end Zach Ertz. Listen, this is a rumor that's going around. One NFL writer has stated that Joe Thunney, the uh, offensive lineman for the New England Patriots, very good player, could be traded to the Philadelphia Eagles in exchange for Zach Ertz. That would be a win-win for both teams. The Eagles desperately need offensive line help. The Patriots desperately need tight end help, and Zach Ertz to the Patriots. Can you can you imagine that? Ertz and Newton will be back to his old self. Zach Ertz will be. So Zach Ertz to the Patriots would be the number one trade target for the New England Patriots. 
Sticking in the AFC East, the New York Jets. Okay, you're going to see that a lot of players from the Jets, as we read off these teams, are going to be, a lot of Jets players are going to be traded out of the New York Jets organization because they want to rebuild and get more draft capital. But who is coming in to the New York Jets organization? They need a lot of help on the offensive line. At wide receiver, we try to dial in on wide receiver. Brandon Cooks from the Houston Texans would be a great trade target for the New York Jets. Listen. Getting some receiver help for Sam Darnold or potentially another quarterback, we're going to get to that later on, would be big for the New York Jets. The Texans have stated that Will Fuller, Brandon Cooks, Randall Cobb, and Kenny Stills, their top four wide receivers, are all eligible or are all on the trade block to be traded because they're trying to erase the problem that Bill O'Brien caused and trying to get more draft capital. Not a single pick in the first round or the second round. Can you imagine if the Jets were to bite and trade potentially a second round pick for Brandon Cooks? Because it seems like Brandon Cooks can play after since after Bill O'Brien or since Bill O'Brien got fired. Brandon Cooks, eight receptions in one game, nine receptions in the other. Looks like a threat in the NFL. So Brandon Cooks to the New York Jets would be great. The Bills need a lot of help on defense as well. At corner, they need, they could use some help. Um, and at the uh, edge rushing position, we have Akeem Hicks from Chicago uh, as a trade candidate for the Buffalo Bills that they should pursue. Listen, Hicks is getting a little bit older in age, and he's regressing just a bit in Chicago. And he's a couple years into his contract, so if the Chicago Bears want to move on with him, the Buffalo Bills should bite on it and should trade for Akeem Hicks and could help out that defensive line. Because if you saw that game against Kansas City, that defensive line, that front seven, did not look the greatest. So they could use some help on that line. The Miami Dolphins, the last team in the AFC East. A lot of needs on this team as well on defense. But let's talk about the offense. Let's talk about that offensive line. Let's talk about Justin Pugh, 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 Pugh from Arizona, signing that big big contract after becoming a free agent from the New York Giants. A little bit of a letdown in Arizona, not living up to the the numbers that he signed with, uh, he signed for with the Arizona Cardinals. So if the Cardinals have buyer's remorse, they could trade Justin Pugh, and the Miami Dolphins should jump on that to solidify their offensive line. AFC South, the Jacksonville Jaguars, they need help on that defense. Listen, if you still think that Jaguars defense is as good as they were in 2017, they got rid of everyone. They got rid of Clayus Campbell. They got rid of Yannick Nagakwe, who just got traded. We'll be talking about that in just a bit. They got rid of Jalen Ramsey, A.J. Bouye. They need help everywhere. They, they drafted C.J. Henderson, but I think they still need some cornerback help on top of that. And Brian Poole of the New York Jets is a good option for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Listen, he's not that bad. He really isn't. He's hasn't been looking the best, but I think it's more so because of the Jets' defense than it is Brian Poole as a talent. And bringing Poole in, like we mentioned, the Jets need to get players out to get more draft capital and rebuild. Getting someone like Brian Poole into the Jacksonville Jaguars will be big for the Jaguars. So not that bad of a player. Could help that Jaguars secondary. The Indianapolis Colts. Their defense is solid. Their offense is solid as well. You could say that uh, they need some help at the quarterback position. Maybe in the future, yes. For now, Phillip Rivers is okay. He's decent enough. They could always use some offensive line help, some more depth. And that's why I believe that Jake Matthews of the Atlanta Falcons would be a good trade target for the Indianapolis Colts. So Matthews is up and down for the Falcons. And the Falcons have battled with this for so many years. They're like, oh man, his contract is coming up. Should we resign him? I don't know. He's been good at times, but then he's been bad at sometimes. And then eventually, when he's in, it's time for a new contract extension. He plays good enough for the Falcons to be like, oh okay, yeah, let's resign him. And then he just does the same thing where he's just up and down. So if they want to get rid of him com- completely, move on with him. The Colts could be contenders to land Jake Matthews. The Tennessee Titans staying in the AFC South. Michael Brockers in LA would be good edge rush help for that Tennessee Titans defense. That defense we expected to be much better. We expected them, oh, when they signed Jadavion Clowney. Oh, man, 
no brainer. This t- this defense is going to be top 10 without a doubt. They've been kind of a letdown. And you could say that that could be because of the secondary. Malcolm Butler has not been looking as good as we expected him to. They've lost to Dory Jackson, but a Jackson is coming back. So maybe that secondary could be better. But Michael Brockers on the edge with someone like Jadavion Clowney, with someone like Harold Landry, with Jeffrey Simmons mixed in there as well, could be good news for that Titans defense. The Texans, the last team in the AFC South, the trade candidate for the Houston Texans. I know I'm kind of breaking the rules in my own game because I have to pick a team or a trade candidate for every single team. But I'm going to go ahead and say whatever. It's my game. I make up the rules. I can do whatever I want. The Texans, no trade candidates at all. What are you going to give up? You have nothing to give up for a trade candidate. I mean, You could trade a receiver, yeah, for another player. But more than likely, what teams want in exchange for players is draft capital. And you have absolutely nothing to offer in the first round and the second round. And you could land some, you know, some starters in the with a third round pick or uh, it's going to be hard though for the Texans to make a trade so there's absolutely no one that they could trade for and they shouldn't trade for anyone and they shouldn't give up any draft picks because at this point Bill O'Brien really screwed everything up so they really need to hold on their draft picks and not trade for anyone so Texans just stay put this year no one's going to blame you it's okay don't make a move for a player The AFC North, the Pittsburgh Steelers, Marcus Cannon of the New England Patriots opted out because of COVID-19. So this could be a good trade for them in the future moving forward in 2021 and moving forward. Okay, so the Steelers, uh, they have a lot of contracts on their offensive lines coming up after the uh, 2020 season. I believe it was, oh my gosh, eight players on that offensive line that need contract extensions or you need to make a decision on them to move on from them. So getting someone like Marcus Cannon, who has a more more so two or three years left on his contract, getting him from the New England Patriots, a pretty good player in himself, could do really well for the Pittsburgh Steelers. A move that they can make for the future after this uh, season because he opted out for COVID-19. The Cleveland Browns, linebacker help, edge rushing help, okay? Joe Sherbert signed with another team. He's gone from from the Cleveland Browns. Matthew Judon, a player from the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens are, are, are non-committal on Judon and his future. He's playing on the franchise tag. Good player, but the Dolphins or, or, or the Ravens could move on from Matthew Judon and could move on to the Cleveland Browns saying, hey, you know what? We're done. You can have him. Cleveland Browns could jump on that and sign Matthew Judon to a long-term extension if they were to trade for him. The Ravens, okay, so they just made a trade for Yannick Nagakwe. okay? So that pretty much sums up their one trade target prior to the trade deadline. Yannick Nagakwe is going to help out their defense and their edge rushing ability. But what I had prior to Yannick Nagakwe was trading for Corey Littleton from Las Vegas, okay? So he was great with the Rams. He's regressing with the Raiders just a bit. So if they have uh, buyer's remorse that the Raiders have, then they could have traded away Littleton to the Baltimore Ravens and he would be cheaper than Matthew Judon as well. So that's what I had prior to Yannick Nagakwe getting traded, but Nagakwe is that trade target for the Ravens. The Cincinnati Bengals, secondary help. And they're going to say with the AFC North, sign or trade for Steven Nelson. Oh man, if you are a fan of the NFL or you know about Steven Nelson, you know uh, the kind of player that he is. Okay, he's good when he takes the risks. Risky player. Takes risks, high risk, high reward. But man, when he just, he gets burned often. It, it, that's just the reality. He got burned in Kansas City. He got burned uh, a lot in Pittsburgh. And if he were to go to the Bengals, he may get burned a lot. But if they need some secondary help, which they do, the Bengals could make a move for another AFC North cornerback. And that is Steven Nelson, which the Pittsburgh Steelers will happily be able to give up and trade away to the Cincinnati Bengals. The uh, Chargers wrapping it up in the AFC with AFC West. Jamon Brown in the Philadelphia Eagles. Huge letdown. I don't know if you watched some tape of Jamon Brown on that offensive line at the guard position. It's not that not the greatest this season in 2020. So if the Eagles just want to move on from him, I don't blame them. And the Chargers, they could use some offensive line help. 
Uh, it's not that big of a need, but it could help getting someone like Jamon Brown. Who knows? Maybe he'll have a resurgence and you could get him for something cheap uh, if you're Los Angeles. The Las Vegas Raiders. Safety help. Keanu Neal, often injured in, in, in Atlanta, so the Falcons could be at this point. I don't could could not be trusting of signing him to a long term extension and could be moving on from Keanu Neal. Great player as a Falcons fan personally. I would love to keep Keanu Neal, but I understand that the Falcons want to move on just because of the injury issues that he's been having and hasn't played a lot for the Falcons. So the Las Vegas Raiders could make that big splash move and getting Keanu Neal. Justin Simmons is a player on the Denver Broncos that could be traded to another AFC West team, the Kansas City Chiefs. Simmons could be a trade target because Simmons has not agreed to a long-term contract extension. They're at, they're at odds for that deal to be done by Denver and could be moving on from the Denver Broncos if they were to trade him away to the Kansas City Chiefs. They need safety help. And can you imagine if he were to line up with uh, Tyron Matthew as the other safety and could work in some reps with Juan Thornhill? So, that would improve their secondary very, very much. The Denver Broncos just got rid of Justin Simmons, let's say, to the Kansas City Chiefs. They need safety help. Or they keep Simmons, and they, they are not committal about his future, so they could move on. You still need a safety. Jabril Peppers, who was traded earlier a couple years back with that Odo Beckham trade when they traded uh, him to the Cleveland Browns. But Jabril Peppers is now on the Giants, and he would be a cheaper option than Justin Simmons. So a good replacement, a good player, and you get to save some money at that. So why not? Now to move on to NFC trade candidates. If every single team, if you guys are just joining us, we stated that every single team has to make one trade prior to the trade deadline. So if that were a rule, which player would they target as a trade candidate. So starting with the NFC North, the Green Bay Packers. Trade candidate, they need a wide receiver so bad. There's John Ross out there, but why not get the other Cincinnati Bengals wide receiver in A.J. Green? Much more trustworthy than John Ross. We talked about this with Antonio Brown. If Antonio Brown signs with the Packers, you'd have him and and Devontae Adams on opposite sides. Green and Adams on opposite sides as well. Come on. Come on, that's a dream come true. A team that is capable of making the Super Bowl, trading for A.J. Green would be fantastic. The Chicago Bears, okay, so they need a quarterback. They really do. They're 5-1, and one, and they're going to continue to win games and continue to make a push at making the NFC playoffs, meaning that in the NFL draft, they're not going to have a high draft pick. You're not going to get a good quarterback. You're not going to get Trevor Lawrence. You're not going to get Trey Lance. Instead, you've got to trade for a quarterback. And Sam Darnold of the New York Jets could be an option to come to Chicago. Why not? The Jets could trade him away since they're already get, uh, certain that they're going to get the number one pick. And if they want to take the risk that Tre- Trevor Lawrence is going to make the decision to enter the NFL, they could land Trevor Lawrence. So with that number one pick, the Jets get Trevor Lawrence, move on with Sam Darnold, and the Bears get the quarterback of the future. The Detroit Lions, Pernell McPhee of Baltimore. Listen, there's some contract talks or contract odds with the with the Ravens. They have to make a decision on McPhee uh, and Judon and a lot of defensive players at that point for the Baltimore Ravens. Let's move on with some of them. Let the Detroit Lions handle that. Uh, you pair them up with someone like Trey Flowers, could be a good pass rush help. They need linebacking help as well. So Pernell McPhee, if you want to run a 3-4, 4-3, whatever it may be, he could be good in either scenario. The Minnesota Vikings just traded away Yannick Nagakwe. If you want to make another move for a defensive lineman, Jonathan Allen of the Washington football team could be an option. They have great defensive line help. They've got Chase Young there. They've got uh, Matt Ioannidis. They've got um, a lot of players that they are eligible to trade away on that defensive line, and Jonathan Allen is one of them. You've already got Deron Payne and Ioannidis there in the defensive tackle position. Allen, let's move on. Contract uh, extension is coming up. We don't want to pay him a lot of money. Let's move on with him and get him to the Minnesota Vikings. The uh, New Orleans Saints, Solomon Thomas just tore his ACL. This is another move, like we talked about with the Pittsburgh Steelers trading for Marcus Cannon. 
this is a move that's made for the the future. Okay, this isn't really a right now kind of move. He can't make an impact now. Obviously, he's out for the season. But if you trade for Solomon Thomas, his asking price right now is lower than ever. They're able to sacrifice giving up some defensive line uh, players. The San Francisco 49ers are. Trade for Solomon Thomas. You could have some help on that defensive line uh, and the defensive tackle or the defensive end position as well. So he would be some good help uh, and good depth for the New Orleans Saints. Staying with the NFC South, the Atlanta Falcons. Shaquille Barrett of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, another NFC South uh, edge rusher, had that breakout season when he had 19 sacks last year in 2019 is playing on the franchise tag because they're not sure yet if they want to sign him to a long-term deal. That's okay. Trade him to the Atlanta Falcons, okay? They've already signed Dante Fowler. They've signed, uh, or they've got rid of Vic Beasley. They have Tack McKinley, who could be a trade candidate because he's been kind of up and down as well for the Atlanta Falcons. Shaq Barrett could be an edge rusher that you could use for the future and could be a cornerstone in Atlanta. So that would be a good move for the Falcons. The Carolina Panthers, a lot of help is needed on that defensive front. You could trade for a defensive player, but instead, why not make your offense much better in a position that you need? David Njoku, tight end of the Cleveland Browns, has stated, listen, I demand a trade. I want outs. You have Austin Hooper. Browns eligible to trade David Njoku. Let's give him up. Why not? Let's just move on. We have Hooper, and the tight end position is thin. Ian Thomas is not going to get it done. In Carolina, you land a tight end that has great athletic ability, could help out with that offense in David Njoku. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Okay, so I had them originally trading for Jonathan Allen, uh, but I gave that to the Minnesota Vikings because they already traded for another defensive tackle, and that is Steve McClendon of the New York Jets. Listen, that's going to help out a lot on that defensive front. Okay, Vita Vea has been in and out. They got rid of Jared McCoy a couple years ago. They need some more defensive line help. That run defense is good with Ndamukong Sue mixed in there as well, but you could always use depth on that defensive line, and Steve McClendon trading uh, for him from the New York Jets is a good move by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now on to the NFC West. The Seattle Seahawks. Ooh, secondary help. Okay, sign Antonio Brown, get your wide receiver help, But you also need secondary help as well. Why not get a veteran cornerback that a team is willing to give up? And that is Joe Hayden. Listen, this move is not smart for the future because Joe Hayden is getting up there in age and he may not be that much of a productive player as he was in the past anymore. But you're not really thinking about the future. You're trying to make a Super Bowl run right now. Sign Antonio Brown for a Super Bowl run in 2020. Trade for Joe Hayden for a Super Bowl run in 2020. Help out that secondary so your team could be much better when you get to February. The San Francisco 49ers. Malcolm Butler, another uh, cornerback that could be traded from the Tennessee Titans. Ship him out. He's been up and down as well for the Tennessee Titans, underwearing or he's been underwhelming compared to the contract that he signed. And he signed a five-year, $61 million contract. They want to get rid of that. They don't want anything to do with that. Hey, San Francisco San Francisco 49ers might be able to pick up some of that contract, might be able to deal with that. So if you want to move on from Butler, Sherman's been hurt. You need some secondary help. That defense needs help. Why not bring in Malcolm Butler? The Los Angeles Rams. Linebacking help is a big need. Alex Anzalone in New Orleans. Okay, they need a linebacker since they got rid of Corey Littleton, who was a very underrated player for the Los Angeles Rams. He's with the Raiders now. Anzalone from the New Orleans Saints could be a good player for the Rams. The Saints are willing to give up linebacking help if it comes down to it. Okay, they drafted Zach Bond. Okay, they're waiting for Kiko Alonso to come back from an injury. You already have Demario Davis. They have a lot of linebackers that they can play with. So why not trade Anzalone? His contract ends after this year and you can move on with him to the Los Angeles Rams. The Arizona Cardinals could use some help in a lot of different positions, but let's talk about the tight end position. Dan Arnold is a good player. I like him a lot, but he's not going to be a difference maker. Add some depth to that position. Someone small, Cameron Bray at the tight end position. Listen, OJ Howard is also another trade candidate at that point. But if the Buccaneers want to stick with OJ Howard because he's much more talented than Cameron Brait, as well as Brait being eligible to play this year because Howard was out with an injury, trade away Cameron Brait for something small. And that would help out the Arizona Cardinals offense 
a lot. The Philadelphia Eagles, we talked about this with Zach Ertz and the New England Patriots, making that trade for Joe Thunny, the New England Patriots offensive lineman, would help out the Eagles so much. Trade away Ertz, you don't need him, you've got Goddard, he's hurt, get rid of that contract, get Joe Thunny a much more uh, promising and, and, and cornerstone player for that offensive line, much more of a need for the Philadelphia Eagles. The Dallas Cowboys, sticking with the NFC East. Anthony Harris from the Minnesota Vikings. Great season in 2019. Signed a franchise tag. Could not get a deal done with the Minnesota Vikings, so the Vikings could be eligible to move on with him. And you need some secondary help with that horrendous, that historically bad Dallas Cowboys defense. So sign or trade for Anthony Harris. The New York Giants. A lot of players that they need. Wide receiver is, is a big need as well. But let's stick with that offensive line because if you saw when Saquon Barkley was there, he was not getting it done with that offensive line. Still bad. You need help. Alex Mack, the center from the Atlanta Falcons. Nick Gates is a center right now, and I like him a lot. Good player. I'm not saying to move on from Nick Gates with the New York Giants, but he's a player that could play guard, could play tackle. You could shift him around different places on that line. Alex Mack could be your center, and with this contract coming up with the Atlanta Falcons, they could resign him. It would not be out of the realm, out of the possibility of the New York Giants signing him to a long-term contract extension. So the Giants bolster your offensive line with Alex Mack. And the Washington football team, they need a lot of help as well. Let's talk about wide receiver help with John Ross. Okay, Steven Sims is not going to get it done as a number two wide receiver for the Washington football team. You have Terry McLaurin on one side, John Ross as a deep threat. That's a match made in heaven. You helped out your offense so much that needs a lot of help. Listen, the quarterback position, whether it be Dwayne Haskins, whether it be Kyle Allen, whether it be Alex Smith of the future, whether you draft someone in the NFL draft, that's to be to be decided later on. You don't know anything about that yet, so don't make a move in the next week for a quarterback. Instead, make a move for a receiver that was a former top 10 pick that has a lot of potential and a lot of upside, and that is John Ross. So those are our trade candidates for the 2020 NFL season uh, prior to the trade deadline. So do you agree with any of this or do you disagree? Who would be your trade candidates that you see uh, being traded in the next uh, week or so? So comment down below, chat with us, and let us know who those players are. Now to get to the last segment of the show, that is fan questions, fantasy football questions that you guys have been leaving on the Starts and Sits videos every single week. We pick a few of these every week, and we're going to answer them. Starting off with our first one, this is from Sean Peterson with two Ts. Where are the Chinese babes? Okay, so I've been saying for the last couple of weeks that there have been so many Asian bots commenting on their starts and sets of videos. They've been taken over. And that is just ruining people's experience of leaving comments and leaving questions in those fantasy football starts and sets videos. So those Chinese babes, Sean, I'm here to tell you that they're slowly going away and away because you, the Time to Football faithful, the Time to Followers, have been doing such a good job of reporting those Asian bots. And they are slowly but surely being extinct. The last of a dying breed. Uh, on those videos. So, Sean, great news. Those Chinese babes are coming to an end. All right, so legitimate questions now. YouTuber Jay Marquart says, or asks, should I trade Todd Gurley and Hunter Henry for Travis Kelsey? I already have Cook and Connor and Will Fuller for Flex if I trade Gurley. Okay, so look at Gurley's potential for the rest of the season. I believe he's going to be a middle-of-the-pack running back two for the rest of the season, which isn't bad. A good player that you could start, I would say, almost weekly if you wanted to, and especially if the matchup is good. But with you having good running back depth, I want to ask you, who else are your running backs, okay? Because you have Cook, you have Connor. Are you able to have a good replacement at running back for uh, James Connor's bye week or even this week if you have Dalvin Cook on a bye? Do you have good replacements? If you do, then yes, trade Todd Gurley away because you got to think about it. You're really just trading Hunter Henry for Travis Kelsey. You can afford to trade away Todd Gurley. And so here's the thing with trades, okay? A lot of people don't want to make those trades if it's going to trade away a good player, but you have to think about it. You have to take one step back to take two steps forward. And for you to trade away Todd Gurley would be one step back 
but two steps forward would be getting a number one tight end the rest of the season that you can rely on that's going to be an improvement from Hunter Henry, and that is Travis Kelsey. So to answer your questions, if I had a good running back that's good depth for bye weeks, for Connor, for Cook, maybe someone like Antonio Gibson, maybe someone like uh, you know, just like a little bit lower that you drafted a little bit lower or, or later in the draft, then yeah, I would go for it. Um, DeAndre Swift is coming up, so he could be a good replacement here and there. But I, if, if you don't have that much running back depth, I really wouldn't make that trade. But think about it, one step back, two steps forward, whatever that means for you. Next one from Pack Attack. So I have Bell, McKinnon, Davis, and Swift. Who to start even though Davis had 11 points? Start Mike Davis. Mike Davis, even though this last week was kind of his quote-unquote down week, even though he had 11 points, which is not that bad, he's still that number one running back for Carolina and will be at least for one more week. So get the most out of Mike Davis while you can. He's been looking better than ever. So Mike Davis, I love him as a start over any of those players. Next one, Goo Punch Live. Man, I'm in a wide receiver bind. I have I have to bench one player. I have Allen Robinson, Fuller, Lockett, and A.J. Brown. Depending on uh, the matchups or looking at the matchups for all of those, I would bench. This might be a week you, wait, you may want to bench Allen Robinson. He's going against the Rams, and he could be lined up one-on-one with Jalen Ramsey. Follow the whole entire night. I don't like the odds. I really don't. Maybe he'll get three receptions, four receptions, five receptions, put up a decent amount of PPR points, maybe like eight or nine, but you got to look at the upside and the potential of the other players. Okay, so A.J. Brown, at this point, after this week, I'm going to take A.J. Brown off those must-starts videos because it's going to be a given that A.J. Brown is going to be a must-start every single week, so keep that in mind. Brown, you have to start every single week. He's your wide receiver one. Lockett and Fuller. Okay, Fuller is getting to that point where he may be a must start every single week. Dependable, the number one target for Deshaun Watson. and has a great matchup at that point in what could be a high scoring game with the Green Bay Packers. Tyler Lockett has a good matchup as well with Arizona and what could be a high scoring game. So the potential is there for Brown, Lockett, and Fuller. And Robinson is just left high and dry, lined up with Jalen Ramsey. You may want to sit Allen Robinson this week. This one, next one is from Matthew JMZ. I have Johnny Smith, Austin Hooper, and Hayden Hurst. I don't need three and only need two. Who should I drop? It would be tough to drop any of those, but if I had to make a decision on any of them, I would drop Hayden Hurst. John Smith is the fifth best tight end. I think he's a top five tight end in fantasy football uh, so far this season, uh, and that's including the bye week that he had. So Smith is your tight end one. Austin Hooper is going to develop into a tight end one just because of the volume that he's getting. I mentioned this last week, but Hooper is a start because... Or, I may have mentioned it on the show or maybe in the chat last week, but Hooper and the Browns, uh, the number one or, or the number two team in the NFL with the most target share to tight ends, the Cleveland Browns. So I would stick with Austin Hooper as a good backup to John Smith. Hayden Hurst, it, it's going to be up and down. It's, he's going to leave you high and dry some weeks. You don't know which weeks he's going to go off, which weeks he's going to have a, a, a good week or, or a bad week. So Hurst out of those three, I would drop him. Uh, let's do a couple more. This next one is from Richard Wait, Wait, Wait Cheese, Wait Cheese. Let's go with Wait Cheese. I have Michael Thomas, Boyd, Cooks, and Higgins. Who do I start, and who's my best flex option? I'll have to sit one. Just don't know which one to sit. Well, I mean, I I think we got your answer right now. It's gonna be Michael Thomas because he just got a hamstring injury. So instead, I will since that's pretty much a given and that's an easy answer or a question to answer, I'm instead going to give you a, 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 another take on Michael Thomas. The question should be, should you trade Michael Thomas right now because of the uh, lack of playing time that he's having? A lot of you guys drafted him as a high top five pick in the fantasy football draft and you're frustrated with him. I understand. Listen, if I were you, I would make a move on Michael Thomas right now because there's going to be some Michael Thomas owners out there that are frustrated, that are ready to move on, that need those bench spots because some 
wide receiver or another wide receiver is going to go off, or maybe Des Bryant is in talks of uh, 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 signing with the Baltimore Ravens, and he's like, oh, man, I want to sign Des Bryant. I want other players off the waiver wire, but I have no room. I need to get rid of someone. I'm frustrated with Michael Thomas. That's where you can keep you can creep in. Creep in and inquire about Michael Thomas. Trade for him because the rest of the season, the second half of the season, Michael Thomas is going to do well. He's going to be back to his Michael Thomas up to speed uh, player that he was. People give him the nickname Slant Boy. Who cares? Who cares? He gets a lot of receptions. So he's great at PPR leagues. So I would trade for Michael Thomas. He's by low right now. Last one from Nick Mundo. Choose the best flex option for my PPR league. Joshua Kelly, Justin Jackson, Boston Scott, or Brandon Cooks. <sighs> PPR. Let's do a process of elimination. I'll start with that. Josh Kelly, no. No go. He was my drop of the week for running backs because he's good to have if you're if you're Justin Jackson. So you, Nick, you do, you're doing a good job because if Justin Jackson... If you're a Justin Jackson owner and he were to get hurt, you have Josh Kelly there. So you're you're doing the smart thing by rostering both of them. But do not start Josh Kelly. I believe it was Justin Jackson who was the better back against the New Orleans Saints before the bye week. He just looked better. He, he was involved in the passing game. Josh Kelly has not been looking good. If you look from the eye test, he was involved in 35% of, uh, give or take, 35% of offensive snaps while Justin Jackson was involved in over 60% of offensive snaps for the Chargers. So Justin Jackson is a much better option than Josh Kelly. So Kelly eliminated. Boston Scott is going to be running in a, uh, or he's going to be operating in a running back by committee approach. This was confirmed by Doug Peterson. This was confirmed in week one when Miles Sanders was injured. Boston Scott did not do much. So Boston Scott is going to be in that committee Yes, good matchup against the Giants, I understand, but I would not put my stock in Boston Scott, especially if you have Justin Jackson and Brandon Cooks. Cooks is a start just because the matchup as far as Green Bay wide receiver or Green Bay quarterbacks against wide receivers is not the best, but it's going to be a high-scoring game, so Cooks is going to be uh, a good start, but I would have more faith in Justin Jackson. If I had to choose any of those players as the best flex option, it would be Justin Jackson out of any of them. Like I mentioned, in over 60% of Chargers offensive snaps, Josh Kelly has not been looking good. And every running back that has faced the Jacksonville Jaguars, most of them at least, have ran well against the Jaguars. So Justin Jackson is a start this week. Wow, that'll do it. That'll do it for this episode of Time to Football. So again, ladies and gentlemen, we come out with this Thursdays at 7 p.m., we want your opinions. Do you guys prefer this as a good pregame show prior to that Giants, Eagles, or any Thursday night game every single week? Because like I mentioned, we take you away from Colleen Wolf and Joe Thomas and Steve Smith and Michael Irvin and that awkward tape delay and interrupting each other. And you're going to have to listen to Joe Buck now. There's nothing I can do about that. Sorry about that. But do you prefer this to be on Thursday nights or do you prefer this to be back on Wednesday nights? Comment down below and let us know. Also, be sure to hit us up on uh, the iTunes or the podcast app on, on iTunes because we come out with this podcast every Thursday at 7 on iTunes as well. So if you want to join the audio experience, listen to us on the go. Don't want to watch an hour-long video on YouTube? Totally understandable. Listen to us on the go. Vice versa, if you're listening to this on the podcast app, jump on over to YouTube. We have much more video content coming out there every single week and chat with us live as we premiere it on YouTube. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. It's week seven and Adam Gay still has a job and I'll see you next week.